Hello, I'm Tanerika Roy. My teammates and I have done a project on effective greenhouse farming as a part of a heat transfer course. Aditya and I would like to walk you through what we've done. India, as we know, is an agriculture-driven economy. However, it's sad to notice that more than 95% of Indian farmers still resort to obsolete farming practices. This often leads to lower quality of produce, which in turn causes the farmers to earn lesser than they should. This is also why an average Indian farmer lies below the poverty line. Greenhouses are usually glass-made structures which help set up optimal conditions for crop growth and nourishment while protecting the crops from erratic weather conditions and pests. This could help Indian farmers step up their produce quality and dependency. The flip side of this technique is that the setting up and operating cost of greenhouses is extremely high and unaffordable for an average Indian farmer. We as a part of our project want to bridge this gap and enable Indian farmers to build and use a cost-effective greenhouse while reaping all of the benefits. To solve this problem, we have taken a use case of growing okra, commonly known as Lady's Finger of Hindi, which is a summer crop in winters. We would do this by maintaining a steady optimum temperature within the greenhouse at a low cost so that our farmers can gain monetary advantages by growing an off-season crop in good quality. The costs associated with the greenhouse are divided into two primary sections. The setting up cost includes the material cost that is the cover of the greenhouse as well as the costs for setting up fans, heaters and temperature sensors. Operation costs include the electricity used to run the fans, heaters and sensors as well as labor cost. Our model proposes to eradicate the fan and electric fan heat and electricity part of the greenhouse as well as reduce the material cost this is what our greenhouse looks like it has a double layered polystyrene wall and there is an air gap that is introduced between the two layers of polystyrene the primary mode of entry of heat into the greenhouse is radiation that is sunlight and the heat escapes the greenhouse by convection and radiation through the walls, both the curved surface area as well as the side walls. The temperature profile as visible on the left shows how the temperature varies through the walls of the greenhouse. Radiation has the highest contribution as compared to the other three modes of transfer, followed by convection and then conduction. Conduction plays a very small role because air is a bad conductor as well as ground is at a constant temperature and acts as a temperature sink. So in our calculations, we are going to ignore conduction. So what we are basically doing is uh, growing a summer crop in winter. Now what are the benefits of uh, growing a summer crop in winter? Uh, first of all, uh, there is going to be less uh, supply of summer crop in winter because it's winter and you really can't grow a summer crop in these con in those conditions. This means the uh, supply of this crop is going to decrease. Therefore, and since the demand of the crop uh, remains relatively the same, you are likely to get good prices for these crops. This is why off-season crops like uh, mango and all are ex uh, are uh, are expensive compared to uh, compared to when they are in season. Now. Now, how do we grow a crop which is which grows in a temperature which is suited for summer like 28 degrees Celsius uh, in a place like North India where the temperature outside can range up to say 15 degrees Celsius during the daytime. So here we use the uh, greenhouse effect. Now, so first of all what do we do is like we consider a simplified structure which we take as a rectangular surface instead of a, a semi uh, in, instead of a semicircular prism. So the reason why we are doing this is to uh, make a simplified structure uh, to simplify the problem and find out the material properties that we need uh, to uh, to make some uh, make a structure like this and to explore the feasibility of our solution. Now, uh, now taking a rectangular uh, surface does not really change the solution in a lot of ways because a lot of the parameters that we use almost remains the same. The, these parameters include things like uh, Nusselt number correlations which really does not change because the curvature of the greenhouse that we are considering is not that large that it would make a lot of difference when we, uh, when we take a rectangular surface. 
Now, so what we now do is a basic energy balance. The, there is energy coming in through sunlight. Uh, we found out the uh, the average energy that comes uh, comes in winter in in North, northern India, and and then we uh, we can find the total energy by multiplying the area of cross section, and then considering the reflection on the uh, on the surf, on the wall. Now, uh, the heat that is going out can uh, can be of two types: one through radiation, and the other through conduction and convection of the wall. The one through radiation is quite straightforward to calculate, uh, and the one through convection is uh, is calculated by draw, finding out the resistance network and using the Nusselt number correlations. Now, uh, after we uh, after we did all these calculations, we came out uh, with these conclusions that one uh, the resistance that uh, we found that was optimum for this is 0.54 and uh, most crucially what we found out that we cannot uh, have a single boundary a single uh, layer of wall to uh, get the um, get the required conductivity or the required resistance to ensure that the optimum temperature inside is like 28 degrees celsius therefore what we had to do was to uh, was to uh, was to improvise and uh, introduce something like an air gap which would give us uh, the required uh, which would give us the required uh, effective conduct and effective resistance now the reason why we had to do this is because the conductivity that we got without an air gap is something that is not not feasible uh, unless we use something really expensive like glass or something that is uh, uh, so something that has uh, so something that is really expensive this kind of defeats the purpose because what we are trying to do is reduce the cost uh, of making this greenhouse for, for the farmer which is really a big factor in, uh, in, cons in uh, that the farmers take into account when they decide to make a greenhouse or not. So therefore what we decided to do is we decided to stick out with a cheap material like polystyrene which has a conductivity of 0 0.033 meter watts per meter Kelvin and then have an air gap of 1 centimeter which we found works well enough to give us a resistance of 0 0.54 and this is this works perfectly for us to maintain an optimum temperature of 28 degrees Celsius when the outside temperature is around 15 degrees Celsius. Now, now extending this to our actual problem we have uh, a semicircular prism for as a greenhouse uh, and drawing the control volume a lot of calculations are almost the same except uh, a few changes in the nusselt number correlations uh, as you can see the nusselt number correlation that we use is here uh, this is a really big expression but uh, simplifying it uh, basically we have nusselt number as a function of the average nusselt number as a function of the reynolds number prandtl number uh, then uh, and we are considering a windy situation with a uh, wind uh, of around 3 meter per second which is approximately 10 kilometer per hour uh, so the reynolds number uh, we got uh, with the calculations that we did was around 2 into 10 raised to 6 the length scale we used was the diameter of the uh, the the semicircular prism which is 10 meters uh, and uh, the prandtl number we got it as around uh, 0 0.707 now using uh, the Nusselt number correlation we can find the average heat transfer coefficient which uh, we found out to be approximately 5.84 watts per meter square. Uh, now you now that we have the heat transfer coefficient we can now draw the resistance network and, and once we do that we will find that uh, we had to consider two surfaces the first surface would be the curved surface and then the two flat surface towards the end. The flat surface uh, due, uh, due to like practical necessities do not include an air gap and therefore uh, only consider the convection term and then the conduction term for the material and for the curved surface we have the convection term the air gap and then two layers of plastic which contributes to the conduction term. Now calculating uh, the total resistance and then uh, apply and then finding the uh, heat that is transferred through both uh, that is transferred to the walls through conduction and convection we find that the q total would be around a thousand watts uh, for this case now uh, what we did also is to uh, do uh, simulations via open form to find out what uh, an approximate temperature profile was and also to find out how long this would take to uh, obtain steady state so that we can extend it to uh, f find variation in uh, temperature throughout the day as you know the temperature does not really uh, stays constant and it, it varies uh, during the day therefore uh, we found out that through our open form simulations that it uh, the steady state is achieved uh, pretty quickly and therefore we can extend the same model that we are using to find the uh, the day, day variations of temperature. 
Now let's move on to discuss the outcome of the calculations that we performed. This is a graph of the temperature inside the greenhouse and that outside it. We can see from the graph very clearly that the temperature inside the greenhouse is significantly higher than that outside it. This is exactly what we required for the growth of a summer crop in winter. We took the temperature outside as a sinusoidal function of time and on doing that we could see that at around 12 noon the temperature inside the greenhouse is exactly the optimum temperature required for the growth of okra that is 28 degrees centigrade. We can also see that the variation of temperature inside the greenhouse is lesser as compared to that outside the greenhouse. This helps us eliminate the need of temperature sensors, fans and heaters which were used in original greenhouses to bring back the temperature to the optimum temperature inside the greenhouse. This is a huge cost advantage when we talk about both running as well as setting of costs. This graph shows us the variation of inside temperature with wind speed. And as we can see that when the wind varies from 0 to 3 meter per second, there is a change of only 1.4 degrees centigrade of the inside temperature. This is not significant and the plant can survive this much variation while growth. If we increase the wind speed further, the decrease in temperature is not going to be significant as we can see from the shape of the graph. Thus, the, the model of our greenhouse is not going to be significantly affected by the wind speed. Lastly, we've drawn a comparison of the inside temperature with respect to the air gap between the two layers of polystyrene. We can see that on changing the air gap between the two layers, the optimum temperature varies. This can be useful to the farmer while deciding which type of crop he or she wishes to grow and can build the greenhouse accordingly. This can help in personalization of the greenhouse with respect to the crop that the farmer wishes to grow and in turn better quality of outcome. Now let's discuss the implications of the greenhouse that we propose. First, the farmer recovers his or her setting up cost of the greenhouse within three months of operation, after which it is just profits. Secondly, selling an off-season crop helps the farmer uh, not be subject to market pressure and hence the farmer tends to earn more than he would have while selling the same crop in summers. Another thing that we have been able to inculcate in the greenhouse is the reduction of use of fans and heaters because as we saw in the graphs before, the variation of inside temperature is way lesser as compared to that outside. So we do not require a temperature sensor or a fan to bring back the temperature to optimum. This helps us reduce a lot of both material as well as running costs. The farmer also gets to step up his or her farming game because he enters a realm of new technologies in farming. While we were discussing solutions to our problem statement and brainstorming different ideas, there were certain nuances about the solution and the problem that we came up with that have not yet been solved by us or are not a part of the use case. So discussing those, first, the temperatures during winters drop drastically at night. And while taking calculations for the outside temperature, we considered the 12 hours during the day but during the night when the temperature is going to drop, the temperatures inside the greenhouse will also get affected in turn. This might affect the optimum temperature of the plant. So there needs to be a workaround by which the insulation is such that the, temp the heat which, which enters the greenhouse during the day can stay enough so that it can cover the night without dropping the temperatures way too much inside the greenhouse. Second, polystyrene, the material that we chose as a part of the greenhouse cover, is purely based on the absorptivity, reflectivity, conductivity of the material, as well as the cost of setting it up. Um, what we have not taken into consideration is the fact that polystyrene, which is a type of plastic, will generate a lot of plastic waste 
and it is worthwhile to find an eco-friendly alternative to this material. Lastly, there are a lot of winter crops which include very good variety of fruits and vegetables which we would like to eat in summer. So from a user point of view, that is from a, a person who wants to buy these crops from the farmer, um, the, the reverse of our current user case would also reap a lot of benefits and we should also work towards flipping the use case. Thank you from all of our team members and I hope this was an informative presentation and we wish to continue working on this project further on the topics we discussed in the last slide. Thank you.